everyone brings backpacks to these things, thinking for the walk, but I'm hungry, you got kids walking, people walking, people. You can't say, someone say, well, just say there's no backpacks. You can't do stuff like that. This isn't even the police say, we'll say we'll do that. You, you can't do that, realistically, in this society. You can't just like, be in backpacks and things like that. I know, like, sporting events, people, I was, just, I was at the Bruins game, tried the Bruins game last night for security. People show up with the backpacks still. They don't let you in. You're not getting into Boston, now TD Garden with a backpack. They'll let a woman in with a small pocketbook, but that's it. So people say, well, I'm going to leave it here. If we don't leave it there, we're going to have to go have a dog sweep it now because we're going to have a abandoned backpack. So I have the bomb squad with me all night going crazy because they're leaving the backpacks around because they're, you know, they're going to figure out to take what they take and someone takes the bag. They'll take it and leave it outside. Now we have to deal with that. So I think the public is going to be understanding. And this is, since 9 11, they haven't let you have the backpack inside the, uh, the guy, but people still bring it. But for public, outdoor public events, we can't tell people, hey, don't bring a backpack. If people here have like a young child, they're going to have to, you know, it's, it's not realistic. Yeah. Kevin, don't you think, though, that uh, this, I mean, my personal politics aren't, aren't along these lines, but I think in, under these kind of circumstances, wouldn't we be better off to have uh, a, a system of television cam of surveillance cameras? And wouldn't that have a deterrent effect as it does in England? I mean, basically all England is covered with these cameras, and I think the thieves know it, or the criminals know it, and they, it, it stops them from committing some crime. Well, we wouldn't have caught these guys, or well, highly unlikely we would have caught these guys without the video cameras. Yeah. I mean, that's, anyone can see that. That's, that broke the case. Yeah. Those pictures going out on TV, that's how those, that's what broke the case. But for a lot of those were private cameras, right? Uh, they were private cameras. Yeah, why, why, don't have, why don't I have police cameras? We, we have some Homeland Security cameras, but the other thing is the Homeland Security cameras, they're not, like those security cameras that you saw, those are the, say, the look at across from Lord and Taylor, their eye view, yeah. those are to catch people coming and going, coming across the street into their premise. That's good facial recognition yeah, cameras. Yeah. Our, the Homeland Security cameras that we have in the city, they're from a great distance, they're up on the top of the building, they're for like overall management of crowd control. Yeah. You can't zoom in and see yeah. somebody's yeah. face. That's why everybody was talking about the surveillance cameras the police have. We really don't have that yet. Certainly not in Britain, or not in New York, or Chicago. Other cities have invested with those type of cameras that you can see right down to the ground level. It's been a lot of money on those. And we really haven't done that to the extent that we could. We rely a lot on, on private cameras. And it's, we don't have those all linked into like our system either, like we're doing in Britain. That's something where it may not even happen in America just because, company. even after this, I don't know if private companies would link cameras into the police or that's something that's... Well, more and more private businesses are putting them out. Oh, they, yes, I, they, are, they are putting them out still, but I was saying whether they link them at some point. But just knowing that they have cameras it is great for us. Our guys knew immediately, our, our Boston detectives went into Lloyd and Taylor and secured the video. Because we know the area. This is where our streets. We know they get great cameras there from other investigations. And that, that video ultimately is what broke the, uh, broke the case. And they, they have good video. I, I think it's a good thing that we do invest in the best technology we can get. I don't, um, my personal, personal liberties, if I'm out in the street, you can take a picture of me, folks. Yeah. I, I, I'm not planning on committing any crimes. I don't care. Yeah, you take, you need to take a picture of it. I never heard of that. The only one I know is the meeting. We have one up across. Yeah. Oh, the meeting needs? Um, Take it from the source. No. Oh, maybe it's the bank. Yeah, you mean like a bank camera? Or? No. Not a city camera. She didn't give somebody a ticket and they said we saw the person from leaving the double black cat. Unless it's down at either commercial in Hanover or uh, yeah, yeah, we'd see it on yeah. But, but they don't they don't we don't use our cameras for traffic purposes. I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't use our, our cameras for seeing if like double five. Maybe check with Eddie Hester to see maybe you know where his he's the engineer for the city. He might have put one up for some reason. Yeah, but yeah. there's a system of, of cameras that monitor major intersections for traffic purposes, like any aspects of transportation. 
seems like down around the place, yeah, we have a camera down there for Homeland Security, but the city has a camera there that monitors the intersection, and they can adjust the signal lights when the traffic gets backed up. So that's something that where we, we do have those cameras, but we don't have one on Hanover Street that I'm aware of, even from the city. Yeah, just at the end. Yeah, this is the, yeah, at the end. Cross. Yeah, cross. But yeah. Where it comes, maybe they can just check and double check. Because it's down by uh, 424. Uh, we have one on commercial. Yeah. We have one on commercial. There's a city camera. But, and it's Hanover and Ross. Well, the Coast Guard basically. I mean, I assume they probably have smoke. Well, the Coast Guard base has security. Yeah. See, certainly yeah. have security cameras. Yeah. Camera right on the gate. But it, you know, it's part of that, I think, just the future. I know some people. <coughs> You know, they're concerned about privacy. But you got to realize every bank you walk into, every convenience store, every Dunkin' Donuts, uh, everyone's videoing you all the yeah, time. Yeah. So you're out in public, you're out in public. Now, no one wants a camera looking in their windows when you come into your house, and no one wants to do that. Um, and we don't, you know, we don't have any intention of doing that. But the commissioner, uh, which today was actually getting a, a degree tomorrow at Northeastern. Oh, you know, yeah, really he's being yeah, honored by Northeastern yeah. tomorrow. Um, you did a great job, I think. You really did. Yeah. I know the mayor did a great job also. It was tougher for the mayor to, to get around, but the mayor was right on top of uh, the situation. And he, he got to be crawled out of a hospital bed. Mm -hmm. So he was he was kept in the loop. He was being briefed. Um, he also did a great job. But the commissioner has mentioned about getting those uh, those lower level cameras mm -hmm. so you can see people's faces. Mm -hmm. it, this is yeah, it's, it's where, where we're living now. We have people trying to kill us. Mm -hmm. We got we to address you know what I was kind of shocked at? Tonight's news before it came out. They, uh, the two kids that out of the three that were arrested yesterday, they had the front plate of their car, Terrorista, yeah, number one, number two. They, they make them buy, they, they, they actually print these kinds of things. The kids buy the well, they, I guess. Yeah, they I mean, I've seen, I've never seen Terrorista, but I've seen Gangsta, but the kids put um, stuff in the cars. I don't know why. Terrorista you know. was a little. Yeah, it's uh, certainly now in, in hindsight it, it, it is, but the kids guess. put foolish things, plates on the car. Yeah, I think they they do. Well, in fact, this, uh, this evening, a young high school kid, my third one, got arrested. Yes. Sent yeah. no bail because he had a, something on YouTube yeah. there, yeah. and then the, the, the officer said that was from the third one. Police were saying, "Hey, we take everything serious." Yeah. And the young kid, 18 years old, but now he's locked up without bail. Yeah. Well, part of it's the threats, but I'll tell you what I worry about is a coffee cat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody sees this, and, and we're all horrified by it. Yeah. They see it. Hey, I could do this. Yeah. I, I could do this. I could you know, look on the internet and, and make one of these things. That's what I'm afraid of. That some other young kids will, will, will try it. I think everybody did a good job. I think the only thing that's bad for the whole thing was the TVs interviewing this kid's mother. That was horrendous. Yeah. Americans Rich. this, Americans killed my yeah. boy. Yeah. I wish they should have never done that. Yeah, but she, she's a nice person. I mean, no. It makes no difference. Why? No, 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 two, two seconds yeah. 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 They put her on 25, 30 times. I'll do more for what she's doing. Yeah. Then she's on the terrorist list. And the more they put around, the more people were watching, saying, did you see her? It's a, even at the station, they're like, did you see her? So I don't know if that would, that's a drive to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what that is. The media, too, uh, in hindsight, I know we have a member of the media here in the back there, but those little jump the gun uh, with the arrests that were no arrests. Uh, and that caused a huge uh, problem. We had to send offices over for crowd control at, at Mobley Courthouse. And, we knew there was no rats to us. Yeah, well, there's a security plan with yeah. uh, high profile yeah. defendants are at that courthouse. Yeah. That's it, same for that. Yes, I wanted to ask you we were talking about security cameras, and it happened to be a lot of tail with security camera that picked up this. Each, We have three banks on Hanover Street or four, whatever we have, do they all have security cam cameras outside on the street? Uh, I don't think they all have outside the street, no. Just at the exit. Just at the exit door. 
I don't think they, I don't think any of the things that I've And they have to kind of tell us. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I'm trying to say is like, say, say the software bank, for instance, if there was any activity at 2, 3 in the morning outside of the Pompeii, would it pick it up? No. No. That's something that uh, I would hope maybe banks in some places will think about doing things differently, though, and getting that outside. That's one of the things we recommend is outside video for, for banks and, and obviously for But, but you did teach that Vegas over at Bank of America on Cambridge Street. I mean, the yeah. 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 He, he was in the yeah. ATM. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, the ATMs, it's a lot of that was police recommendations, getting the camera lower. Yeah. That's how they get those face pictures now. That's when you put your card in that screen right in front of you, mm -hmm. is a camera. So we recommended that they take the camera, they had them up here in the corner. It was useless to us because the person's ducking down because that's, he, yeah. he sees the camera. Yeah. Yeah. You put it at fight face level, eye level, that's where you're going to get some. You might can't break the front door, Yeah, so you're not going out. Yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of businesses just do their, they have the camera right on their entrance and they don't even catch the sidewalk. But I'm sure as this goes forward, there'll be a lot of more discussion on, on, on cameras and, and placements and, and things like that. I think you'll let people realize, make us safer. It'll deter these people, it'll make us safe. But it ended on a note that suggested that we really have to protect ourselves. Each of us has to protect ourselves. Do you offer classes to individuals? I would assume that like in Israel, they teach their citizens to, to kind of protect themselves, to look for bags that have been left. And I do that when I get on the system. If I get on a subway car, the very first thing I do is look for something that's been left behind. Not to individuals, no. We have done classes, those type of classes for businesses and, and different things for, for groups, citizens, but not like an individual. I've been to Israel. It is a very different mindset there. All of the citizens consider themselves to be part of the front line, just like the police. They see themselves as citizens fighting a war on terror. In your stuff. opinion of that? Well, if I live there under that threat, absolutely, absolutely, I agree with them. They're the, they're the absolute first line, and many times in Israel, you're dealing with a heavily armed population, and they have people that have stopped the terrorist threats right, right in their tracks. The citizens have. The, so. the Homeland Security, State Police, and Mass Board have a film that does just what you're saying. Brings everybody in from the airport, teaches them how to be vigilant, etc., etc. So you may want to call one of them. They may come down and show you the film. And it's pretty. Some of it's graphic. They can cut that out. But it's what to look for, how to look for, how to report it, and everything. I've seen it 20 times, so I know they have. Yeah. And that, that's actually a good suggestion. We might be able to do one of those films that's not quite doesn't show like you know without right. looking to scare everyone graphically with an explosion, but somehow make it to show people these are things to look for. But I know that the T has had a, um, had a big campaign and see something, say something over the years. You know, they're always putting that out if you want the T. They, they constantly put that out every, I don't know how often they, they run that. But, and well, this film was so good that everybody, anybody involved in the airport, including the aviation worker, had to go to this class, had to sign in and watch the film. So it might be good we, we tried doing a community against terrorism thing when I was a captain in Dorchester. And we did one public, we, we had a real good crowd too. We did one public, we had a lot of people come in. This was, you know, not too long after 9 11, say a year after 9 11. And then there was some feedback that people would be calling up against, um, you know, people who looked like they might be, say, Muslim citizens or just. It was feedback that you know, some people take the wrong message, even though that's not the message that they were given, that people might have the wrong message. So that was almost like a pilot, and you know, we did it, and we didn't, we didn't do it again. 
we didn't pick it up for, as a department and say we're going to go out and do this to all the community groups because some people, I mean, we, had, I mean, we had a very diverse audience, but as some people took the message we understand later, they were taking it the wrong, the wrong way, that they, they should be calling up uh, based on people's experiences of things, which is the exact opposite of what mm -hmm. the presentation was, that it's actions, it's mm -hmm. not people's, you know. Well, it was a bad film. Yeah, and in, in part of it, we used generic materials that we had gotten. I don't know if we got them from DHS. I don't want to blame DHS because I'm not sure who, who gave us the film. But when we were talking afterwards, we thought it was clear our message. And sometimes people hear what they hear. Or, 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 or miss, miss, miss this film was shown to everybody from the custodian to the executive director. And everybody had to see it. It's pretty generic. And they had some graphic scenes in the beginning to get your attention, but they simply cut that out. No, yeah. like the state police have that film, they did the training. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, it's it, it, funny you mentioned in Israel because Israel, your first duty, you're, you're considered a first responder, every citizen. They teach their citizens differently. You go there and immediately all citizens have to help. It's a, a different mindset of, of the culture, which we saw some of that though up on Boston Street. We saw citizens running and help, yeah. and it was appreciated to help. They saved people's lives. So, again, you're living under a threat, but it changes the way you think a little bit, too. Okay, what do we got now? All right, let's get back. <laughs> All right, back to, uh, well, let's start with the good news, Phil. All right, overall, A1 down 25%. Year to date. No, for the year. Year to year, year, year to date. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And part one prior. Part one PALT, right? Yes. Going through the last 30 days, there were no homicides. There was one death investigation. It was a guy who fell into the uh, water. Yeah. I, I know you guys probably saw it on the uh, news. It was down by the, uh, the hotel. Yeah. No. Behind the Marriott on one Uh It's still under investigation. We don't know the exact circumstances. And it's another case where we we're and pull an area of video to see. But we just have to that the one that police officer went in there to make a rescue? No, no, that no. That there, there was another, yeah, that was over in South Boston side. This one here, uh, the person, he was uh, rescued out of the water, but unfortunately, uh, yeah. What's his age? He was uh, in his 30s. Yeah. I, I don't have time. Uh, mid 30s. Mid 30s. He was. Uh, I believe he may have been uh, homeless, uh, I believe being homeless, and was with some other homeless people. So be, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> we're looking to just have a, a chat with some people there that we've, uh, they don't, they're not wanted though, so I'm not going to leave their information. We're just looking to talk to some more people who were there at that scene. Um, and they, they were, uh, people were drinking, which doesn't matter. But again, that's our only death investigation we had. We had no sexual assaults, one robbery. I will talk about that. We had to go through the reports. No graduated assaults, two breaking and entering, three auto thefts. A little rise in auto thefts. That's the only category where we really just saw a little rise. Um, usually on the auto thefts lately, they, it's people mis misplacing their cars. Mm -hmm. And these ones here, though, I don't believe that to be the, uh, the case. Uh, I think they were, like, these people's cars were stolen. Yeah, it's going to have to go home. Yeah, one on April 29th. Foster Street? Foster Street? No, there was one on Moon Street. Oh, yeah, April 30th. Moon Street. Yeah. The other one was assigned. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was during the night. It was during the night. Moon Street. Moon Street. Moon Street. Moon Those four are just cars that are left open. Yeah. Those were, those ones were uh, <coughs> auto thefts where they actually took the vehicle. Oh, took the whole thing. Yeah. Which we've been way down in auto theft. Uh, we have been even one years. last month. We haven't had many at all in the month then. We really haven't. Um, but so we had left one. Do you know? Uh, let me just check. I remember one of them last month was somebody left a, a car right. Right. Yes, certainly left the car riding with yes. That would be yes, that was uh last month's uh theft. <laughs> 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 
One victim believes they may have left a spare set of car keys in the uh, in, in the vehicle. The other two report that they parked the cars and then just came back and found them out. Stolen. So we'll follow up on those and see if uh, if they show up or where they show up and what uh, what condition they're in. We had three last day from motor vehicles. One graffiti. We actually apprehended the person who was doing the graffiti. Um, there were two people from Revere. They was uh, vandal observed vandalizing uh, Officer Curvin. He's the 621A. He's the Hanover walking beat on, at midnight. He observed him uh, up at a cross street, at Lynching and Cross, writing on a uh, writing on the stop sign. City of Boston traffic island, uh, state, state right at island signs. So they were writing on signs with a, uh, a black uh, magic marker and he wound up stopping the uh, vehicle. How old were they? 25 to 27. Uh, you know, the it was one of those magic markers where they were just writing on the Assault. Oh, I don't know if they had it. Yeah, it doesn't say anything. Yeah, I don't know if they had, 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 a, had a record, but uh, they might have thought that uh, actually they caught her with the uh, mark, but she might have been an artist. But they're right, yeah, they're right. Uh, again, we've, uh, we've had some instances of graffiti, obviously, in the, in the north end, some of them we're working on. We, we take photos of them, and we try to follow up, and the postal police follows up for, you know, for the mailbox when they're writing on them. So we do try to identify people because, amazingly, they usually write, they have like a, we call it their signature, their tag. They write the same thing all the time. So we actually are able to like, catch them and later charge them for other ones because they have it. Some of them, we've caught them. Uh, we have got Billy Kelly, detective who works in our Boston Regional Intelligence Center. He's an expert. He has books, photo books, that he's caught from them. Because they take pictures later of their graffiti. Yeah. They think it's the greatest thing. And they usually mass college of art students. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's what they do. And there's a whole culture of that graffiti culture that, you know, that young people are involved in. And the way thing is facing public property, but other people think that they're doing, you know, great art on it, so. But we're likely to catch, uh, catch to what I was doing. Um, we had no community disorders in the North End. We towed 13 motor vehicles, and for the month, we gave out 59 motor vehicle violations and 311 wow. parking citations. Uh, there's only one warrant arrest also, and that was really it for the overall arrest. Do you want to go through the report today? Yeah. Okay. The robbery was on uh, the 11th of the month of April, uh, Salem Street, and it was a, um, a victim. Uh, the, uh, He's actually a Coast Guard officer. He was walking back to the Coast Guard base. Uh, he was accosted by a couple of guys. And they um, took his uh, wallet, his, all his Coast Guard IDs. What, was it in the bags? No, this is no, like no, 2 o'clock in the morning. Two, after 2 in the morning. We, we're working with the, uh, with the Coast Guard on that, one of the detectives. Uh, he, uh, he was going back, you know, he had a few years going back, and he's two, uh, two white males. I don't know if we had much of a description. Uh, just hoodies and hoodies, and not much of a description came up and kind of a body. Look at his wallet, his wallet, and his, his, his iPhone, his, his, uh, his um, Coast Guard he phone, on his that? personal phone. So, was he assaulted as well? Uh, they, they pushed him they down. They pushed him down, and, down. and you know, he wasn't like, you know, it just kind of knocked him down. He, these, we see a lot of these uh, phone robberies. 
That's our most common item actually taken in robberies on District 1 is, is the, uh, these Apple phones. The people are walking and using them. We've had a number of these up in the Boston Common, and it's usually later, later at night, not during business hours. And we have kids, you know, just going up and snatching phones. This one here, uh, this is almost, what do you always we used to call things, like, we used to call it a bum roll. I shouldn't say this, but I don't know. Okay, how do you buy it? They'd, where they'd see uh, somebody who's been intoxicated walking home, kind of stumbling along, and they'd give them a quick nudge to the ground, mm -hmm. go through his pockets real quick, and take what they want. And that, you know, years ago, that was a very, very common, common crime uh, at, at night. We haven't, this is the first one we've seen like this in, in a while in, in the North End. And, and that description, too, really has, and then description uh, of that and that. Uh, across the Students walking and they're just ripping the phones out of their hands going by. The college kids going back at night. That's what usually happens on, on, the, uh, on these phone tests. The uh, VEs, there was two for the month uh, one on the 20th of April, uh, 111, 111 Atlantic Avenue, and the uh, actually what happened was uh, the, the individual was home and the uh, suspect came in. Stated to him, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> so he uh, took off running. I didn't get any property. Right? But um, there was no first entry or anything into the apartment. So he doesn't even know how this yeah. the guy came. Uh, and the second one, the other B&E, was on Goodrich Court on the 24th. And the um, victim states that the, um, the door was forced open. And he was uh, had um, laptop, watch, two watches, and some uh, coins removed from his apartment. And, um, as of now, there's uh, no suspects. And, um, and, uh, they actually uh, recovered a crowbar at the scene. So the door was forced open with a crowbar. The uh, Lassies, it was one, the first was on the 15th of April, and that was uh, commercial in Prince Street. The uh, victim was robbed of his cell phone. He, um, he stepped out of a taxi right, and uh, he had somebody stole his cell phone from him. The uh, second one was the 25th on Charter Street. Uh, he, um, he caught up the victim said somebody stole his um, coffee maker. <laughs> <laughs> And on the uh, 27th of the month, we're in a quarry with us. Old new home. The victim's reporting his parked motor vehicle, someone stole his Rhode Island uh, license plate. Okay, it's actually was off his motorcycle, the Yamaha motorcycle, on Prince Street, number 27. And the fourth one was on uh, at Atlantic Avenue. And uh, what happened was the garage attendant. Had the keys in the booth, and somebody came and stole a key to one of the cars. Right. And he ran off with the key. Just the key, Just the key no car. <laughs> and the uh, last and for more vehicle, there was three for the last 30 days. On the fifth, it was fifth um, on the fifth of the month was Cooper Street. The last of uh, a um, three dollars taken from the coin from the um, is. Um, Lock box in the apartment, and um, his uh, rental agreement from Enterprise was stolen from the car also. The other car break was on the 28th, and um, this was uh, at Battery Wharf, another garage, and uh, he had quite a few things to take from this car. He, he left everything in the vehicle, charges, iPads, all clothing, gloves, necklaces, uh, all numerous pieces of jewelry. This guy left him. I can't go on. He left him this guy. The drugs. And again, the next one was from another uh, parking lot in Lewis Walk on the 29th. And the victim reports that. Um, Locked his vehicle, returned, and um, 
Some have broke into the car and stole the property from the uh, center console. And, it, and that was on the uh, 29th at the Lewis Walk in the parking lot. The auto thefts that we, uh, the captain mentioned, again, Wiggett Street um, on the, um, the 5th. And the, um, okay, go. that was a Honda, uh, Honda, 2000 Honda, 2000, yeah, which is, uh, the easiest cars to steal. Yeah, uh, Honda. Yeah. And old, older Hondas, the keys, yeah. they wear down. You can take any older Honda key, open a door, and start it. We've, we've had our auto theft squad show us how easy it is to do it. There's no parking lot. It's a lot. Was that our lot? Now he's actually he said he thought he was in the area of Wigan. Oh, he doesn't know where he's at. Okay. This could be. Uh, All right. There's an addendum on the other report saying this could be one of our supplementals. <laughs> it's probably parked on Charles Street. Our most common stolen car is they park it on the wrong street. They come in and report it stolen. We recover it right. on this next street. Oh, I left it there. That's our most common yeah. stolen car. Yeah. Which is, you know, I'm not even going to Yeah. And they say, I never park on that street. Well, you did because you parked it. <laughs> so uh, and the next one was on the 29th on Foster Street. Uh, the victim, um, the 2005 Ford Freestyle. Uh, it must be a pickup truck. And um, left it overnight. Came back and it was gone. Check for tow, no tow, and he left the keys inside. And, that one. and the uh, final one is, is uh, the 30th on Moon Street. Again, another popular car for parts, the uh, Toyota Corolla 2009. Popped overnight and um, came out in the morning and was gone. And that's basically it for the reports. Thanks, Teddy. Thank you very much. I have an overall general question. Sure. Um, a lot of these crimes, you know, whether it be larcenies, break-ins, uh, cars being stolen, you know, regardless of whether there's an upswing or a kind of Is um, your theory that it's basically all or predominantly due to junkies, people with drug addictions, whether they be people that live in the neighborhood or not? For most car breaks, yes. About yes. some of the other crimes of like B and E, because B &E also that is the crime. Yes, breaks in, in B and E's are the crime of choice of, of, of junkies, unfortunately. Um, that being said, though, we're not seeing wide increases. Right. You know, in, in the north, I want to make that clear. Uh, sure. But that is the crime of choice for junkies. The reason we carry the one where the guy walked into the house, we thought he just said that. That's why we carry it as a break-in, because he oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong house. But we, we, he may have been just going through trying doors, so that's when we're going to follow up on, on that. Because um, the guy said he's never seen this person in the neighborhood or anything else, and the guy was very nervous and dropped back out of his house. So we carry it as the higher crime, even though you know it, it may be legit, but I'm, I'm thinking it's not. And he's going around trying doors, and they're going to go the easiest way in. That's what we always tell the people. They'll take the stuff out of your car if you leave it there in plain view. They go and look. And the, the poor guy, the tour, I mean, we, we laugh, but he left everything in this car. Right. If you get computers and everything. Well, you know, it, sometimes it, it may be for insurance, of, but we've seen people leave unbelievable things in the It's very hard to claim insurance for stuff you say you left. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah. difficult. Yes, I don't, they're not going to just write it. It's truck was broken in and keep probably. Yeah. yeah. Leaving in the car all these expensive items. Was it a resident? No, no, no. Taurus from Warren, Pennsylvania. Ah. Uh, so they might have been traveling. You know, Taurus might have been traveling a lot. They call me Boston Carnival. When they have everything with them, they have a, have a nice meter there by the Boston Carnival. They got everything on plain view. Yes. Captain, a couple of weeks ago I was reading on the police blotter 
if there was an unregistered sex offender at 70 Fulton Street. That's the rest of the home. That's the address of the home. Yeah. That's the address of the home. If, if a person is, uh, <laughs> if, based on you know the levels of sex offenders, if they're, they're required to register, if the person has not registered, the police will take out a complaint against you for being an unregistered sex offender. Um, I'm looking at it quick. You say how to get in the work, how to get in the nursing home. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you never know. Well, you never know. Yeah, you yeah, never you know. know. Yeah. There's a school right up the street. Uh, I, I, I was yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. There's a school. You know, it, 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 yeah, it, it came up as a part two. Yeah. On on April uh, April 18th, we sought a complaint against an individual at 70 Fulton Street for failing to register as a sex offender. You know, we, we, we go through the crime, but we got a couple of pages of all the incidents, but we really just do the top one crimes, and that's where we just sought out a complaint against them. I'm not, I don't know about that, but I'm not looking at the courts. I don't want to say Yeah. Um, if, we have on down in downtown, like someone asked one time in a meeting, without trying to scare people, like how many sex offenders? We have so many homeless that are sex offenders that live that give their addresses as Boston, or give it as one of our shelters downtown. So when you, if you looked at it, like where are the sex offenders? It's going to say downtown Boston. They, people register at South Station. They, they say they live there. And it's, it's tough because you can register out of a homeless shelter, the court's rule. The fact that you have no address, as long as you come in and check in with the police and just say, I have no address, where do you stay? Well, last night was a bench on the Boston Common. We have them in their address in the police files, our bench on the Boston Common. Because, you know, we have to take their reported uh, address, which is tough. And many of them, are, you know, many of them are truly are homeless, just living on the streets. Um, those, you can go online to look people are interested in seeing how many are in the area, certainly go online. It's level two and three, but not level one. So who put a set down about that when you find out? When you do, when you get that kind of report, that somebody is living in a nursing home hospital, that kind of thing, will you just go there and make sure they're registered? We go there, make sure they're registered, make sure they actually live there, and we do an inquiry to see if they have access to children, if it's a child offender, and things like that, yes. So we have a detective, we have, actually, for us, we have so many, we have a guy assigned full time to do that. Yeah. That just shows you, with all these homeless and, and, and going around. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure on the level of this offender, so I don't want to comment, because we, you know, it varies by which, which crime, and you, you're, uh, you go before a, a board that the state has, and they classify you in these, in these levels. But for, for our side, for the police side, we get that information, and we go up and, and verify. And I'm just, I don't have the report, unfortunately, for this one, but we must have went, found that this person is, wasn't registered, and we went down to the complaint down. That's what we do on our side. When people think we're like monitoring them all, we have, as I mentioned, we have, they're not, no one's under constant monitoring by the police. I think that's like, I don't want to scare people, but it's just, we don't have the manpower to monitor these people. They're off the boat. Are they removed from the premise if they don't um, register? Or do they just register and stay at the premise? They could just register and stay at the premise, yes. So he'll, he'll be brought to court, and, and, and you know, it's a criminal charge, but the, the he may register. The key is that they report, not where they live. Whether they live or don't live is not a crime. It's they have to report. Yes. So if we have it. If you've ever been to District One at, at say nine o'clock, eight thirty, nine o'clock, you don't want to be there no. because it's it's we have the sex offenders register at at District One at the police station. That's where they register. Still have the holders there. At a.m. or p.m. A.m. We take them for the first first two hours. Um, we had a woman, I, I tell you, I felt bad for her. I was talking to her and she was like, what is, she didn't know what they were, but she knew this is a lineup of criminals you don't want to believe. And she said, we try to make a police report. So 
Uh, Christine actually took her aside and brought her back into the office and she wasn't out the front there. You know, but we, they register at our police station. They line up. Captain, uh, on any group, is getting any of those people into the district at all? You know, we haven't got a, got a lot because they mostly live in, in, in Dorchester and in Roxburgh. We had a few that were from Charlestown, but we don't, I don't try to think, I don't think we had any in the north end. These are the people that were released for uh, the drug offenses. The biggest there is the waterfront area. That's what we see most of them. Hanging on there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The plenty of benches. Yeah. Not a lot. That's what you see. Yeah. Yeah. Changing the subject a little bit, just to your point about concealing things. I remember reading a study a few years ago of motorcycle thefts. And by far, they saw, these companies saw all these big chains and stuff for chaining and motorcycles. But by far, the, the biggest. Uh, Thing to minimize the chance of your motorcycle being stolen is a full cover, because the criminals don't want to take the trouble to go and lift up the cover and see what it is. So they just keep on going until they get one that doesn't have a cover on it down on the next block. Yeah, and we tell everybody not to leave stuff in your car and go out and go on meetings and just try and always push that message out because that's the cop that's going to break into the same thing. Same blocking your door too. Blocking your door too. Yes. Not them the same as they didn't have to It's a different world. Yeah, we had one, uh, luckily, in, in, up in the north, uh, up in Pekin Hill, the, the guy in her apartment, her apartment was uh, unlocked. Uh, you know, she screams, you know, got neighbors alerted, but it's, you got to be careful. It, it's leaving the door open for the roommate. Uh, and I understand you might just have one set of key, or however, you know, young people are, but she left the door open for a roommate. So that was the girl. That's a good point. They try to leave like, the kickstand down, like if they could get in company, they don't want to idle. Oh, I see, yeah. yeah. Anybody uh, have anything else? Everyone's got spring fever. Well, thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.